All right, we're back here again. Got my little crash test dummies out. We did some flag work earlier. Yeah, that went okay. We had a bit of an issue with the flank sense, but that was kind of my fault because I didn't readjust it and keep it up on her belly where I like it. And so it jumped up when she took a breath and I was in the middle of doing some flag work too, so. What my sand pants are, they're exactly what I call them. They're crash test dummies. They give me a tool to work with that'll simulate the legs banging around and a little bit more weight and shift and balance and gives me an opportunity to start getting her used to what it's going to feel like when I get up here and put my legs around her and sit on her. And I got two different pair. This is my little pair. And then I have a big pair as well. It weighs about 70 pounds, which exponentially increases the, the weight and the balance that she has to pack around as we move along here. Now, one thing I like to do with these little pants to start out with is first thing I want to start doing is getting her used to things falling down off to the side of her and knowing that this stuff's not going to hurt her. So I'm going to pull these pants off and let them drop to the ground. So that she can get used to something coming off her and not feel like she has to jump and take off or freak out or jump sideways when something happens and something drops off her. Then I'm going to do it all from both sides and then I'm going to do it from the opposite side too. Another good opportunity to start pra to practice your one ring stop. If they do happen to jump sideways, you can get their head pulled around, get their hind quarters moved away from the object that's fallen off rather than jumping on you. <clears throat> get them used to feeling something there underneath their legs so they understand they don't have to stomp on something <clears throat> or they can step around it and know something's down there and not get your get stomped on while you're doing this stuff or if you happen to come off all right now we're going to work the opposite side so <clears throat> she has to watch what I'm doing over here take my lead as to how she needs to control herself I'm going to keep my hand up here on her shoulder so that if she does jump back this way, she's going to push me out of the way rather than jumping on top of me. Not bad. See, I'm not, I don't really mind that she takes a jump like that because of this flank cinch being on because when I ride her this flank cinch is going to be on so if she gets used to this stuff now down here and I can work the bugs out to where she won't hop around like that when I get on her so much the better If I can teach her as much as I can about controlling what she's doing, <clears throat> controlling her thought process and keeping her out of trouble and looking, having her to look to me for support, then we're that much farther ahead when I go to get on her and ride her rather than just crawling on and cowboying up and going for a ride. Good girl. 
All right, now we're going to move this up a little bit. What I'm going to do, put my sand pants up here to where I can hopefully get them to fall off. While I work her a little bit so that I can get her to understand she can move <coughs> with something hanging down there like that. And I want those pants to shift down her side and fall off and then me be able to get her nose around, get her hindquarters broke loose and shut down, shut down that motor on a one range stop. when something comes off. Just like that, exactly. You always work these sand pans to the inside and do your groundwork out with the sand pants in towards you so that you can one rain stock with your rain, break those hind quarters away from what's fallen off, and start teaching them and setting them up to automatically shut themselves off and move away from the object that comes off them. Another safety thing. Good girl. All right. I'll do a couple off this other side here. And we'll call this a pretty good lesson for today if she does okay on this side. start out at a walk doing this stuff. I want to be able to control as much as I can. The faster you go, the harder it is to control. We can always move up to a trot. I'll give her a chance to think about that a little bit. See, that's what I was saying earlier. You got to do this off of both sides because just because they're good on one side doesn't mean they're going to be good on the other side the same way because they don't think with both sides of their brain at the same time. They think with one side at a time. They might get used to something on the left, conditioned to not letting it bother them. But when you come on to the, the other side, you're dealing with the other half of their brain and it doesn't talk to this side of their brain. This eye doesn't correlate to what this eye is seeing. This eye is seeing something different and thinking about it on this side, and she's thinking about something else on this side. So she's just not had as much work on that right-hand side to get used to things that we're doing here. And that means she just got to work a little bit more on this off side and get them equalized out. so that she's good about things on both sides. And you might have to work a little bit more on one side or the other. And usually, you know, most, most folks will tell you that's rode a lot of horses, they're gonna have a good side and a bad side when it comes to turning and, and uh, changing leads and everything else. Horses are right-footed and left-footed just like people. So they might be softer and more flexible and bend better going to the left than they are going to the right or vice versa. And that's all just stuff you got to work on to get them better on the side that they're kind of weak on.
sand pants are a little hung up. for a sand pants and a flag session for today. I think I'm going to work her over here by the fence and crawl up on the rail a little bit and see how she does with that again today, this morning. Start getting her set up there on the fence a little better. Make this a good spot to rest. <clears throat> You'll notice that I'm not overly particular or being overly um, cautious about moving around their head and playing with their ears and stuff up here because if they're sensitive about their head and their ears like this when you're riding them and you don't take care of it and what happens when you're out riding one day and your horse has got a big old deer fly up here on his ear or something or down on his neck and you reach down there which puts yourself in a bad position for getting bucked off by leaning forward and you reach down here and go to touch on them and they come unglued and then the next thing you know you're playing lawn dart with your face That's what I wanted to hear. Nice little big sigh. That's some progress there. Ain't ready to crawl on yet. That's all right. We'll get it figured out. I told the owner I'd hoped to be on her and get her going in three or four days. It might take a bit longer to get her comfortable with me getting a leg over and, and crawling on her. But I don't, uh, I don't rush things. If I gotta work a little longer, then I gotta work a little longer.
You know, she's just kind of playing around with me rather than really listening. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to work on this a bit longer here, but you got a pretty good idea. Oh, there we go. That might be a good place to get over here a little better. That's pretty good. We're going to work on this a little bit longer here, but you get the idea. You can uh, watch some of my other videos on YouTube and some of the other colts we've done to get some more information on this rail work. And it's also in my colt starting videos and my ground and my groundwork video too. So we're going to cut her off there, and y'all have a good day.